Oh, you didn't think all that sound was coming from her, did you? Hey, Turbs. Morning, Turbo. Plunkin. Wait, too much, too much for you? Hey, baby, how you doing, baby? Oh, good boy, good boy. Right on the freshly cleaned lens. So nice of you. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. This video is going to be a little bit different. If all goes well, it won't be that noticeable to y'all. I have some technical issues going on with my computer that's making editing extremely difficult. That garden tour that came out prior to this video took me three days to edit, close to 30 hours, which is absolutely absurd. Absurd for a garden tour. Those are quick, easy videos to edit. I love doing garden tours, partially because it's fun to walk around, talk about the plants, and because editing them is a breeze. But there's just a, my graphics card. If you're a computer person, then maybe you'll understand. My graphics card just, it's not compatible with Adobe anymore, basically. So there's a stutter with editing. So, like, there will be a little box in the corner where you can see the video. And then there's a line you go through to make your cuts. And as that line moves, you hit the space bar to stop where you want to make a cut. And when you hit the space bar to make the where it should stop to make your cut, it like jumps three or four seconds ahead. There's just, there's a lag, which makes cutting the videos up very, very difficult. So I'm going to try something different and challenging for this video, which is going to be um, no cuts. So there will probably be some awkward pauses, some weird things going on. I'll probably stumble on my words here and there and have to just say things over again. And that's just, that's just the nature of how things go probably going to be this way for a little while because I can't get the computers that I want for a while. Graphics cards are not that easy to come by right now. Not uh, the one I want. So it might, might be a couple weeks. I don't know. But I'm going to make it work. So what I had planned for this video, it's not going to work because it requires a lot of editing. I have an area back behind me that you'll see whenever I'm able to do it that needs a big revamp just like i need to gut the area and start over but it's going to require the ability to like speed things up and slow things down and probably put some music in you know the fun fancy things if i were to do it without any cuts it'd be like a five hour video <laughs> for something that it's just, it wouldn't be worth it but i have a ton of plants in the driveway that i can show y'all i need to get them brought through but first what was that what was that turbo the bull queen almost get you and then uh, I, uh, no, first, first, I want to go to Greenscape Gardens here in St. Louis. They got in a shipment of some very nice evergreens that I want to check out. And they have a tree that I've been wanting to get a hold of for a long, long, long time. So let's start things off with that. We can go to a nursery, have a quick browse around the plants. It doesn't have to be quick, though. And then come back here and look at some fun new plants. I mean, that, hopefully, hopefully that'll work out. Oh, before I go, don't want to forget, it has been cold at night. Got to crank that heater on. I think 104, that should do it. Okay, music's really loud and there's no way it can get away with being on YouTube, but here they, look at them. Look at them, aren't they nice? Little gem magnolias. Not easy to find here. I don't see them, there is zone seven. This is zone six, six B, but plenty of people grow these here. But it's not one I see at the nurseries very often. And they sent out an email saying they had these, and I was like, um, yes, must have. So I'm going to pick out one of these, and then maybe if the music quiets down or I find a different spot, we can have a look at some other trees and shrubs just, you know, for chits and shigs. Oh, they're so pretty. They're so nice. Oh, hold on, come back. This one's cool. Look at the fun blue foliage on those. I like those. got a nice texture. Those are neat. I like their shape. They have a lot of really great evergreens here right now. I mean, they always do. Greenscape here in St. Louis, they always have a nice selection of plants. Oh, love the Arizona cypress. Some beautiful red buds, various thujas. Still got the deciduous plants over there, some hydrangeas, macrophyllas, some weeping cedars. Uh, it just, it goes on and on and on and on and on. There's a lot to look at here.
I was just leaving and realized it didn't really give y'all a shot. Here's Greens. They have a big butterfly on the roof and all the fun. It's a fun place. You should check them out. And I'm about to have the most glorious drive home ever. The entire car smells like magnolia. Don't, you probably can't even see that, can you? Hey, Turbs. Do you miss me, baby? What a good boy. Always showing up to be my helper. So I, I have so many plants to show. They're in the driveway. I need to bring them back here. The wasp yellow jacket situation i should say has simmered like they were over here and there were some over here that are now gone now there's also a beehive over here and uh, i don't really worry as so much about the bees they're down the, i don't i don't know i did some digging i can't find anything about bees that live in the ground as a colony they're like ground bees that live individually apparently that's a thing and sweat bees but they don't all share a hole there's like hundred or so bees that are randomly showing up over here in this corner and they've been fine gotten stung one time but it was because it got like trapped like the bee was in there I think that I had done you should probably come out or go back shouldn't just stand there anyways long story short it's safer to walk through here now but I might get stung all right have a look here I guess this isn't the best view probably could have come up with something better, but this is a nice view of the underside of those leaves. Aren't they just fantastic? That fuzzy brown texture that's on them. I also grabbed a viburnum. We'll talk. I'll go ahead and get these unloaded, get them to a spot that's more pleasant, and then get all these things moved into the driveway. Yeah, moved into the... You'll be seeing a whole bunch of plants here piled up on the patio in just a moment. Need to have a quick break for some kitten time. Hi, baby. How you doing? Don't you go running. Don't do it. Stay here. There you go. That's right. Just love on your turbo. That's all you gotta do. Okay. I'll give more kitten updates next week. I have to be very quiet around the kittens. Very skittish. I have tons and tons and tons of footage to show of the kitten, but I am gonna need my editing software up and right. Oh, look who's back. Look who's back. You come back for some more turbo time? Did you come back for some more turbo time, BB? Yeah. It's a kitten. Terrified of everything in the world except for turbo. It won't even come out from that little house unless I have turbo come in here. It, it, I don't think it even likes me. <laughs> but it absolutely loves turbo. And turbo has been very sweet and very gentle. Which is shocking to me. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing a plant haul right now. So let's, okay. Got distracted by cuteness. We'll talk more about the kitten next week. Alright, first, first, we, I'm just, I can't, I can't leave. The kitten's got a case of the zoomies. <laughs> it's really cute. You do stretches, Turbs. Nice stretches. Are you guys gonna stop playing now that I hit record? Yeah, that's what, oh, oh, did he get you? Did he get you? You better watch out. Better watch out, that scary kitten. He's so big and scary. Kissy time. Oh, good boy with the kisses. Careful with your paws. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that was me you got that time, bud. Oh, he's so sweet. He's so sweet. The sniffs? The sniffy party? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Been a few hours. Had some things come up. Wasn't just playing with a kitten. Does it sound more quiet outside to anyone? Anybody noticing anything? I keep forgetting. Can't make cuts. At least not very many. Does the pool look different? Does something seem a little bit off to everybody? <laughs> Where'd all the water go? Had a hose pop off of one of the pumps. That's never happened before. Neighbor called and said that there was water rushing down the street. It was the pool draining itself. Cool. Got it fixed. Not ideal, obviously. I know I don't live in a place where we suffer from drought or anything like that. There's plenty of water here, which I'm grateful for. Let's look at the new plants. See it? Isn't it beautiful? This is the little, well, hold on, let me back up. 
you want to have a look at everything. There's everything from right here around the swoop to that bromeliad. Over 30 things here, mostly mums, if you can't tell. Lots and lots. And lots of mums. These were on sale from a nursery right here called Sherwood's Forest. They're still on sale. It's an excellent sale. The sale is five for 25 of these big, these are gigantic. I don't know, I don't, can I get close enough with my arm? They're huge, yeah, turbo stay there. 100 pound dog, look at those mums. I have them mostly all organized. All of the white ones are right here. In front of that are the pink, which haven't started to open yet. When I buy mums this early in the year or this time of year, I guess it's not super early. It depends on where you live, right? Here, it's about mum season. It has been for a little while. But I do like to get a combination of ones that are in bloom and ones that haven't started yet because that way you keep having the succession and months and months of color, hopefully, or at least several weeks of color. Months and months might be a big ask, but that's the reason for all of these. The majority of these are garden mums, I believe. I, forgot, I was talking about the pink and I didn't even... There's the pink. More of a mauve, in my opinion, but whatever. It's fine. It's a nice fall color. And then the other ones from Sherwood's were these ones that were just labeled as bronze. They weren't open when I picked them up. They're just now starting to open. Looking nice. Very yellow. They are a spoon mum or spider mum, which are mums that have more of a tube-shaped petal to them on the outer edge, see that? One of my favorites, not necessarily the color. Though it is a great fall color, I just mean that I really like the spoon or the spider mums ones with the little tube shaped flowers. I think that those are a lot of fun. Really, really nice, big, juicy, meaty plants. All perennial, except for potentially these right here, which are from Sugar Creek Gardens. These are just single petaled purple mums. That's what they were labeled as. I have found some in the past that were very similar to these that I absolutely loved from Ball Seed and they were just labeled as purple single. So that's, I guess that's all we can say about that one. When I see foliage that's more tight and compact like this on a mum and petals or flowers, I should say, that are held tightly around the entire plant where it has more of that bush look to it, I usually assume it's a garden mum, garden mum meaning perennial mum, but that's not always the case. That's just what my brain always lends me to think because typically a floral mum has a longer stem to it and usually larger leaves, but that isn't always the case. But when you think about floral cutting, right, ones you would sell for cutting, but floral mum also just means annual. It doesn't mean they're necessarily grown and produced for flower markets to be grown them like crazy and cutting them. There's another one right here. Here that I thought that this was an annual, but it isn't. I was looking at the tag on this one. It says Summer Sunset Pink. So I googled that one, Summer Sunset. Look at that. This is beautiful. It's an, labeled as a garden mum online, which I was really shocked by that this would be a perennial. Had I known, I would have gotten probably more than one because that's definitely a plant that I would like to have coming back year after year after year. I mean, look at that. Looks like the flowers open up like in here, almost looking like a straw flower with sort of a reddish pink outline to uh, yellow inner tones on the flowers and they age out to a more white. So you get a combination of various colors and shades on the entire plant and they're really fun. Maybe not fall-esque, but I don't care about, I don't really, the fall thing, I don't care about that. I do like flowers and I like color. I like the plants in general, so that's why so many mums are here. A lot of these will be planted here, but a lot of them are also going to be planted elsewhere. I have some planters around where I'm going to be sticking these and just filling in some spots. I uh, These are the ones where I said, I don't know if this is a perennial variety. I did find, let me see if I can try it on my phone before <laughs> I have to make any cuts here. I took a screenshot from uh, who, I don't know who this is. So Summer Sunset, this was from, I think it was from like Serenity Flowers, something like that. And then this one right here is called the Teresa Pink. You see the Teresa, Teresa, Teresa Pink? It's gonna be hard to see that through the camera. <laughs> I had my editing software up and running, it just popped up on the screen for you. That looks very similar. That doesn't mean anything. There are lots of plants that all can look very, very similar to each other, right? So I don't know if it'll come back next year. These are all probably going to go into the ground or into some sort of situation where I can try and bring them back next year, or hopefully they will bring themselves back 
next year. I'm not a magician here. They got to do that themselves to situate them properly. With the garden mums, really simple. Just plant them wherever the zones five through nine. They do prefer sun. Part sun is okay. The least amount of light they get, the less amount of light they get, I should say, the more stringy the growth might be. It might have some more unruly and untidy looking plants. They need to be cut back when they return the next year. Some, well, usually they need to be cut back a couple times. Basically keep them to a, about 10 inches to a foot high and then uh, we'll stop cutting them back usually around July. And that'll get nice compact growth on them and they should resume flowering as they are supposed to. If you don't do the cutbacks, that's fine, but they should flower earlier and then have more of a long stretched out growth to them. So if you want the nice little compact, like mum balls, <laughs> like you see right here, they're going to need a couple of cutbacks. The, no, we're gonna talk about that one in a moment. This down here, look at that nice foliage. This is a Prag Viburnum. I'll get in here and try and get to the tag without actually touching the plants. These things make me itch and they make me burn. I think it's an eight to 10 foot tall. Yeah, eight to 10 foot tall, minus 20 degrees. It says full sun on there. So it's a zone five. I think if there are five through nine, they're an evergreen leather leaf type. They're one of the smaller leaved of the leather leaf type viburnums. Most of the leather leaves are the evergreen types. The Prague, there's another one. And then there's also just like the leather leaf viburnum. Interesting thing how they have like a group of plants called leather leaf viburnums. And then they also have Leatherleaf viburnums. What's the other one? El Elegany? Elegant? I don't know. I took a picture of it at the nursery. It's another evergreen leatherleaf type right there that has larger foliage than the Prag does. I went with the Prag because these do better in shade. The spot where I need these to go gets a lot of shade. Like It is labeled as full sun. Typically, though, I see these grown in pretty dark situations around here. I'm mean, in sun or in dark shade. The location where this is going to go is just on the other side. Well, it's on my side of the property. On the other side of my property, the other side of the fence, the neighbors have a whole bunch of these that are in pretty deep shade and they look just lovely. Slows the growth down. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more stretched out. That's nothing that proper pruning can't handle. In the winter time, even though they are evergreen, when it gets really dreadfully cold outside, the leaves can cup and hang inward, like kind of like, like that. It's just it looks sort of droopy and sad, but it's fine. When things warm back up, they flush back out and look great. They're a spring flowering plant, they have big white flowers. On, well, not big, but they have not large clusters of white flowers on them that produce a berry that, to my knowledge, is safe for the dogs. Everything I've been looking at online says that they're good. I've been trying to find some evergreen shrubs that are affordable and grow quickly, take up a good amount of space, that aren't like needle type evergreens like i'm not looking for a bunch of like spruce balls and things like that or even hollies and boxwoods i wanted something that's a true like nice big broadleaf evergreen i know hollies and boxwoods technically are broadleaf evergreens but you know what i mean something with a nice big leaf on it so this is one of many i'll be getting more of those are there any other perennials i don't think so well kind of got some creeping jenny down here which is fantastic. So you know what this is for? Does anybody you have a guess? If I got the Creepin' Jenny, you've been watching, you know what's going on over here? Here, this is why. Right there, that has been driving me absolutely crazy. And now, problem solved. Got a trailer over the pot. Well, I haven't planted them yet. You know that, you just saw me stick them in there. I didn't need to tell you that. I will get them planted though. And that's what, that's what those are for. It's a nice, finisher to that container. Needed something grown over the front. A couple of super cows down here. These are premium sunset orange. Look at the flowers on these. Isn't that nice? It's hard to find orange in a larger petunia shaped flower. And there's a reason for that. It may have changed over the years, but for a while there was only one orange petunia available. And I think it was called African sunset. And that one was banned because it had a virus in it that helped to give it its color. But it, like you can't just sell plants that are full of viruses so that they'll have a color. And that was the case with all the oranges that had come out prior to that. And I think since, but this is, this is a nice orange. And it's a Calabracoa, right? Or is it a Super Cal? Super Cal. Super Calabracoa. Yeah, I thought those were nice. These would 
be a great summer annual and I would like to find these to use next summer because I really, really, really like this color. I think it would go nice with the jazzberry. I don't know how a super cow would do plants it up in there with this jet. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That looks nice. I like that. That looks good. And I did pick up a palm tree. I know I don't need any more palm trees, but just look at it. It's so tiny and adorable. It's just, it's a little chunk of a palm tree and I had to have it. It's a spindle palm. It was expensive for a spindle palm too, but I fell in love with it. It's so little and I know it's going to grow which is good, we want our plants to grow. I have a small planter that I've wanted a little palm tree like this to put in for a while, and this will it'll actually outgrow it in probably like a year or two, so that's okay. We're gonna repot our house plants every year or two anyways, right? I say it's fine. When this gets more sun, there'll be some nice orange coming up the mid ribs, and then down onto the inside. That's one of the things I love about the spindle palms are the color and the ease of growth. Super easy palm trees to grow, even in the house. The one thing I don't like about them is that they get very 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 heavy you may remember if you've been watching the channel for many years i've had spindle palms that would start off well, probably a foot or two taller than this and then after several years they would be gigantic and eventually get just too big and too heavy to do anything with and they'd have to go so it's a fun palm tree but they fill and they swell and get big and girthy and just aren't a practical one once they reach like eight to ten feet tall to be moving in and out of the house, although I have the palm tree service, so maybe in a decade then they can handle it. Although I, hopefully in a decade I'll live someplace where that won't even be an issue and I can just keep it outside. And then I grabbed a bromeliad here from Greenscape. Look at, this has one, two, three, uh, something like that. Yeah, four. So this has four flowers on it. That's a lot. Normally with the urn type bromeliad here, you only get just one per plant. This is like a full entire clump here that's going. So there's going to be flowers on this thing for a very, very, very long time. That's my pot. That's my broken pot it's sitting in. The plant didn't come in that. This is one of my favorite of the shade-loving bromeliads. I like that glaucous sort of fine powder they have on the inside of the foliage and then just the pink with the purple on the inflorescence. It's just, it's nice. It's a fun one. Isn't it? Doesn't that look cool? Great plant. Okay, and then some dieback perennials. These are from Sugar Creek, another awesome nursery here. That's where I got those single flowered purple mums there from Sugar Creek. This is the Fall in Love Sweetly Anemone. It's not going to show very well here on the camera. It's an anemone, 20 to I think 25 inches high. It's supposed to be a very, very, very prolific bloomer. I love anemones, Japanese anemones. They have great texture. They tend to be very resilient perennials. Once you've had these in the ground for a year or so, they will come back sun to part sun. Right there, it says part shade. I've never tried these in the part shade. If y'all comment down below and let me know. They hold their flowers up high from the foliage. They move nicely in the wind. They have a great texture to them. So there's the Fallen Love Sweetly, which has a pink doubleish flower on them. And then I also have this Honorine Jobert, Honorine Jobert, I don't know what that says. <laughs> I have no idea, but that's, there it is. It's a white flowered one that is supposed to get taller. So these are going to be in the background of the Fall in Love Sweetly. Both of these will have a good spread on them and then these are good spreaders. So those will have a nice spot in the garden to fill out and provide that nice airiness that I love to have around. Makes things feel more cool when things are moving in the wind. And then look at this gem, little gem. Magnolia, such an awesome plant. I've wanted one of these since I was a little kid, actually. When I was little, instead of you know diving to the kids books, I was all up in the plant books and the little gem was written in a plant book called Palms Won't Grow Here and Other Myths. It's from a professor at University of Miami, the one in Ohio, who I think he's now teaching somewhere down in New Orleans or doing research down in Orleans. David Franco was his name the book was all about growing plants that you typically wouldn't be growing in like zone six or colder climates. And it's really what actually got me moving really more into the research end of gardening and uh, had a lot to do with my future with college and everything. And I went to psych, we don't need to go into all that. You know my life story. Little Gem Magnolia was written in that book. It was described as being a magnolia that has a more refined shape to it, which I would say 
it definitely does. And a nice candidate for zone six, even though these are listed as being hardy for zone seven and up. I've been seeing them grown around here for a while. I just never knew where people were getting them. I was like, where do you have the hookup? And uh, the people who I had talked to who were growing them were ordering them as like tiny little sticks. And the ones they had were like 15 years old. And I was like, I don't, I'm not doing that. I don't have that kind of patience. The little gem is a slower grower. So it only, they only get in the St. Louis area because we're in zone six and these are zone seven plant. I would be surprised to see them any taller than 20 feet, but they can go, I think, 25 to 30 feet somewhere in there. That's very, very, very old mature specimens. When you live outside the zone seven area, you got to remember every 15 to 20 years, it's probably going to be some kind of ridiculous cold that's going to kill the plant back fairly far. That's why like down in Florida, you don't see the Washingtonia palms anywhere near as tall as the ones you see on the West Coast in California because hurricanes come through and keep them from getting to be those like 60 to 80 foot, even 100 foot tall, like skinny poles. So when you see those really, really, really tall ones down there, that's something special. Those are ones that have survived a long time. That's okay, went off topic there. Again, the little gem. This is going to go over here. The little gem is going over here in this garden that I've talked about in garden tours before where I had to remove a magnolia years ago. It was a deciduous type magnolia that had magnolia scale. So this, this bed right here, this is going to be its new home. I'm going to go right here in the middle. It's going to like disappear. Not really gonna be able to see much of it for a while, but that's okay over time. It will grow probably, I would say, 15 to 20 feet in 20 years, something like that. So you know, I won't even probably be here to ever see it get to its maturity. But still, I have an evergreen to go in this spot, which is very, very, very badly needed. Everything over here, except for those sable miners, die down to the ground during the wintertime. This spot just looks depressing in the wintertime. I uh, had thought about a Bracken's Brown Beauty which looks very similar to a little gem. They do get larger than a little gem. They have larger leaves than the little gem and they're much more hardy, also more cheap. Like there are lots of reasons that it would have made sense to do a Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia here, except that because of that size, I didn't really actually want it here because they will still get pretty big. They're a smaller magnolia, but they still get big. The little gem stays slightly smaller and it, from what I can tell from the ones that I see grown around here, more of a prolific bloomer. It is a plant that I have nerded out many times over when I see people who are growing them. And this one, it's September, so it has, a, well, it has multiple flowers on it. It has a big open flower up at the top that I mean, it's so high you're not going to be able to see it. It has one, two, three, four, five. It still has like a dozen flower buds on it, so it's still going strong. And that one flower had this entire end of the patio smelling divine. For a while once the sun went off of it the fragrance went away i'd imagine it's probably strongest in the morning but that magnolia fragrance that like lemony jasmine -y, citrusy smell it's so pleasant and that's what i want near the house may also notice little gem has smaller leaves don't know if i had mentioned that or not just overall everything about it is just smaller this is maybe seven feet tall possibly seven and a half somewhere in there that's a pretty good size to start with for one of these because like I said, they aren't the fastest of growers, at least not compared to like the Bracken's Bound Beauty or just like the, the Edith Bogue is another one that grows fairly quickly for Magnolia. And those are just, you know, they're all sports of the Southern Magnolia of the Grand Flora. Little Gem is going to have more of a conical shape to it, which is something I really like about it. I want to keep the lower growth free of limbs. So I'm gonna want a good few feet of trunk on there before I let it to do that conical shape. It's going to take a long time to get to see this plant where I want it, but that's okay. Even having it just like this, I think looks very nice. A magnolia is a great addition to the garden. They have beautiful, shiny, glossy foliage. Love the velvety brown on the undersides. The flowers smell magnificent. And they have put out a really large cone with those fun red seeds in them that the birds enjoy to eat. And native. I mean, the well, the little gem's not a native. But magnolias, around a lot of the U.S., magnolias are native, just the regular southern grandiflora, and then lots and lots and lots of different deciduous type magnolias. This one shouldn't be at risk of getting the magnolia scale, which is what killed my other magnolia, because those tend to not bother the evergreen ones, so it should be safe from all of that. I'm really, I'm so excited about this plant. I just keep staring at it, just like marveling in awe. 
I don't know why, it just looks like a small Bracken's Brown Beauty, but I think it's because I've always wanted one. It's like a plant that I can check off my bucket list. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I wanted to buy more than one, but I didn't because uh, they aren't fully hardy here, right? Being a zone seven, I'm in zone six, six B. They uh, need to be planted someplace that's sheltered. So that spot over there, sheltered, pretty sheltered for the most part. The other spots where I was thinking about putting this, or if I were to get more, where I would put them, are pretty exposed. I still think that it would be fun to have them in those locations, but if we have a bad winter, which, you know, every several years we drop below zero and things go bad, then we probably have some issues with the magnolia, so won't do that. But I can fill those other spots with the Bracken's Browns, which are also cheaper. This, this thing, it was, this, this was a pricey plant could get a Bracken's Brown that's nearly double this size. Not, well, no, I couldn't get a 14 foot tall one, but as far as the root <laughs> diameter is concerned, I could easily get a Bracken's Brown in a 20 to 25 gallon pot for around what this costs, but that's okay. This, this is what I wanted. The little gem is so special. It's so nice. I love it. I think one of the reasons I've always been drawn to the little gem is partially because the foliage on them reminds me so much of an elastica and it's more pointed but these do give me like if crotons were dark green with brown undersides or like the elasticas they give me that like a houseplant vibe which doesn't sound like the most intriguing thing like why would that be something that draws you to a perennial but it's just for something different i live in an area where the majority of evergreens are conifers or pines, spruces, those sorts of things. So anytime I can get something with a broad leaf, like a southern magnolia or a cultivar of southern magnolia or a viburnum, akubas, I jump on it because it just looks different and looks nice. It does give me a tropical vibe, only because it looks like something that I'm not accustomed to seeing around here. Not an uncommon plant further south, even just like a couple hours south of here. These grow flawlessly up here. They can be long lived, just going to grow more slowly and you know every decade or so they'll probably have some pretty severe dieback from the random negative degree temperatures that come flying through. The other option for that location magnolia wise was going to be for a teddy bear magnolia which are fantastic. They look a lot like the Bracken's Brown which if you don't know the Bracken's Brown looks a lot like the little gem but with a larger leaf and the darker undertones on the bottom of the leaves too on the Bracken's Brown. The teddy bear looks similar, but it's more of a fuzz and they have a nice trunk on them. When they're pruned up nicely, and they have a single trunk on them. The bark on them has more of a smooth appearance to it. I, you know, we'll talk more about all this when I actually get this planted up because I wanna be able to put pictures up on the screen for everybody to be able to look at. And I can't, well, I can't do that with my computer being a jerk right now. So for now, we can just marvel at the beauty. This is fantastic little gem magnolia. Highly recommend if you do live zone seven and south and maybe have a small space, but you want something that smells really nice. It's fairly easy to grow. I, this would be a good plant. <laughs> Starting on my words there. I think I've run out of the things to say. So that means it's time to go. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Is it you guys doing the thing? Fun fall plant sales? It's shrub time. I'm in full on shrub mode right now. I'm picking up a few more here over the weekend. Then getting a pallet of compost dropped off the week after. I'm gonna start just putting all kinds of evergreens in the ground, which I've wanted to do for such a long time since 2020. Couldn't do it in 2020. If you know why, you know why you've been watching for a long time, 2021. Couldn't do it because of the reasons in 2020. So here we are. It's been a long time, been able to work with some bigger plants, make some big changes out here and get more fall winter interest out here in the Magnolia. I mean, this is just all year interest. It's fantastic. I love it so much. I said I was gonna stop. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.